Training camps are a common practice among all different kinds of sports. There's a good reason for this. They work. Training camps are a very effective way to create fitness gains in all kinds of athletes. How exactly do they do this? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. The goal of a training camp is simple, to train. And it's usually a focused time for you to be completely dedicated to your sport or whatever field you're working in. For collegiate football players, they show up a couple weeks before classes start so they can get in some really good training before the fall season kicks in. For the Navy SEALs, they go through what they call Hell Week, which is like the climax of all their training, and they have to survive Hell Week in order to get admitted into service. For me and my collegiate cycling team, we'd head down to the mountains to get in a big block of training before the road season really got started. No matter what sport you're competing in, training camps are good. And you may not be a professional cyclist, you may not be a collegiate athlete, but I think there are still gains to be had by you implementing some of these training camp mentalities or practices into your own training regimen. The first and most obvious benefit to a training camp is the fitness gains that you'll see from it. I mean, come on, the whole point of a training camp is to train. Usually this will come by way of a big spike in training volume. Typically, training camps are the let's go somewhere awesome and ride our bike as much as we can mentality, which makes sense. If you're going to take time off of work and spend money and go somewhere, you're going to want to ride your bike as much as possible to get the full benefit of it. But you got to be careful here. I mean, if you've only been doing four hour trainer rides at home and then you go somewhere awesome and you try to do 18 hours in one week, you might be biting off a little more than you can chew and you don't want these things to cause overtraining or injury or just way too much fatigue. So then you could ask the question, well, should I prepare for my training camp? Or in other words, should I train for my training camp? And I tend to say no. You shouldn't train for a training camp, you should train for races. A training camp doesn't matter if you perform well or not perform well. If you show up with not that much fitness, that's kind of the point. You want to gain fitness while you're at the training camp. I'd be nervous to start training in order to show up to a training camp fit because you might end up burnt out before the big races actually happen. So you also have to keep in mind, you should go into the training camp fit enough to be able to take on the increase in training volume, but also this training camp is just a stepping stone towards bigger goals later in the year. Usually a training camp will give you all kinds of new experiences, including meeting new people, riding new roads, getting to see new places. All of this is really good, but may not directly improve your cycling performance. However, if you do take a deep health or biopsychosocial perspective to performance, you could make the argument that these things do improve your cycling performance because if you're a happier, healthy, overall human being, which making new friends and socializing and just going out and having good new experiences, these things are gonna make you a happier, healthier human, then you can make the argument being that will help you race better or perform better on the bike. Of course, this is assuming that there are gonna be other people at the training camp with you, which is a good thing. I mean, training camps are a lot of fun because you get to ride with your buddies all day, you get to eat a bunch of food with them, and then you get to sit around and tell each other stories and tickle each other and eat s'mores around the campfire. You know, all that best friend kind of stuff. But on the other hand, you could absolutely take the solo approach to training camp, which means you would go by yourself, maybe to a new spot to explore new roads, or maybe to a familiar spot and just get in a few big days of training. And this too could have some not so directly cycling focused benefits, including isolation. I think we all probably hear the word isolation and think that that's a bad thing, but I would argue that it's probably a good thing. It's good to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and to somewhat disconnect for periods of time. Imagine this, riding all day and then eating a bunch of food and then just chilling out and reading a book as the sun sets in the background. That is a perfect day. We need more of that. It sounds rare, but it does sound nice. In fact, most Christians, myself included, ought to take God's commandment to rest a little bit more seriously. In fact, God commands his people to take what he called the Sabbath. It was one day a week dedicated 
to rest and focusing on God. And if you think to yourself, well, I've got way too much to do. I can't just rest for a whole day. Let me hit you with this. There's a denomination of believers called the Seventh-day Adventists, and they take very serious the Sabbath. They make sure to rest accordingly on this day every single week. They're very strict about it. And on average, Seventh-day Adventists live 10 years longer than the average human being. That's just something to think about. So whether it's a group training camp or just solo, there's both benefits of isolation and benefits of socialization mixed in with both of those experiences. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda making this one up, but it totally makes sense to me. In a book I read last year on persuasive techniques, it gives this story of tuxedo salesmen making a lot of extra money after they've sold the tuxedo. You'd think, okay, I sold this one or $2,000 suit to this naive groomsman, success. I can just wipe my hands and move on to the next one. But these conniving, snaky little dudes realize that they can make a lot of extra money right after they seal the deal. Meaning they could convince these groomsmen to keep buying the, the matching belt for $100 and the matching watch for $200 because after they spend $2,000 on a tuxedo, that $200 watch and $100 belt don't seem that expensive and they just add it on to the tally. I'm calling this the psychology of the big one. And it's basically that our definition of big changes in different circumstances. If you're looking at a $100 watch through a mirror, you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty expensive and I wouldn't spend that much money on a watch. But after you just dropped $2,000 on the tuxedo, that $100 watch seems pretty cheap and you might buy it. And I'm arguing that the same is true for training camps. And I'll explain. When you do a big block of training at a training camp, it changes your definition of a big training block. Now, obviously this makes sense for the one week you're at the camp, but I also think that it has a lot of implications for the following weeks and even the rest of your training year after that training camp. What's gonna happen is slowly but surely, they're now training more than they would have had they not gone to that training camp in the first place because now their definition of big is completely completely different than before they went to the training camp. A lot of training camps are led and hosted by coaching companies or legitimate coaches who know their stuff, which means that there probably will be opportunities for lessons and skills and Q and A's and all that kind of stuff to increase your raw knowledge about the world of cycling. For example, last year at the Ignition training camp, the best night that we had was the one night that we did an open Q and A. It was the one night that Dylan was there to tag along. And so we did a Q&A and just let all the campers ask whatever questions that they had to me and him and the other coaches that were uh, that were there. And it was awesome. We, we had all kinds of different questions. We all had all kinds of different discussions. I even had some of the campees ask if we could just do that every evening. And so this year I plan to implement a daily lesson or daily workshop or Q&A type setting where I'm actually teaching the people who are there so that they can get their money's worth and really take advantage of us coaches being there with them. Which, by the way, our Ignition training camp is right around the corner. March 20th to 24th, I'm gonna be in Townsend, Tennessee, along with some of our other coaches hosting the training camp. Last year we did uh, our first training camp. This year will be the second one. It should be a lot of fun, beautiful riding down in the Smoky Mountains of Townsend, Tennessee. For more information, you can check out the sign up sheet. I'll link at the top of the page here and also in the description below. If you want to sign up or if you have questions, definitely feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Would love to see you there. I would also say that you should prepare before you go to these camps too, meaning you should go to these camps knowing that there's going to be coaches there and that you can ask them whatever questions you want. I mean, you should have as many questions as you can think about so that when you're riding on the ride next to the coach all day, you can maximize that time with a professional cyclist or a professional coach and ask them whatever questions you have. I mean, really soak in their knowledge. Take advantage of that time. They're there 
to teach you and they want to do that. When you go to a training camp, your total focus is on training and recovering. And of course, this is a good thing. You don't have to worry about all the other uh, stresses of life. You can kind of forget about your job for a few days and your family for a few, few days and just totally focus on accomplishing the training. And this is obviously a really good thing, but there's also some dangers with it as well. When someone trains harder than they're used to or more than they're used to, it's typically a good thing. I mean, our bodies need this added stimulus so that it can make stronger adaptations. The fancy science word for this would be functional overreaching. We need to do more than what our baseline fitness is used to so that it can get stronger and we raise that baseline fitness. A lot of times this is also called progressive overload. But there is a point at which the functional overreaching becomes non-functional. Meaning you're now not overreaching, you're now over training. So if you bite off more than you can handle, it might do more harm then it does good. It might lead to injury, it might lead to burnout, and it might lead to overtraining syndrome, which is not what we want when we go to a training camp. So yes, do take advantage of the new roads and the new friends that you're riding with and ride as much as you're able to and can, can handle, but be careful that you don't overdo it in the grand scheme of things. When you go to a training camp, you need to respect the effort, which means when you get home from that training camp, you need to rest because you just increased your training load and your training stress tremendously during that week. And if you go back to training as usual, you're not giving your body the recovery it needs. And let me remind you, it's not just training that makes us stronger, it's training and recovery that makes us stronger. So you really need to respect this added load and plan for a good chunk of recovery when you get home from these training camps. So training camps are awesome. I'm a huge fan of training camps. I love being able to dedicate several days in a row to just focused volume and focused cycling. And if you've never been a part of one, obviously you should totally come to the Ignition Camp that I'm hosting here soon. Otherwise, you could probably find some awesome camps around you or you and some buddies could just make your own training camp. Go somewhere awesome, ride for a couple days, disconnect, enjoy the scenery. Hey, we all need a little bit of more of that in our lives. I mean, let's not forget why we started cycling in the first place, to have fun and hang out with friends. So training camp is a perfect opportunity for that. All right, that's all I've got for this one. If you like the video, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay on top of all the content that I'm putting out there. And if you want me to keep creating content like this, you could always become a Patreon supporter, basically just leaving a, a tip in the tip jar for me to say, hey, I like what you're doing, keep making these videos. There's all kinds of other ways you can su support me. You can see those down in the description below, all kinds of sponsors that are helping me out to make it to more races this year. So if you wanna support me, then you can support them because they're supporting me and I wanna support them. And so, you know, let's just all be one big supportive family and there's discounts. So you got that. All right, I'll see you in the next one.